unstripe the resolution limitation from wrong defocus on the edges of a stripe is never worse than four angstroms because we hope for four angstroms. If you would set the resolution target to three angstroms then you would end up with more stripes even and then it takes even longer. So now we have the image um, CTF corrected by only doing face flipping so the contrast um, of the image should be as before. Um, now the lattice there's also some masking ongoing here. Maybe the last stripe wasn't correctly computed. Or maybe it's the way it should be. So this is now face flipped um, and we don't see much difference here. You know, the face flipping doesn't change ton rings, not a Wiener filter. Um, so now we use this to find spots in the image and we found 94 spots. So if I go to this image, this is now after CTF face flipping and make it a bit darker and with N and then look for points. These are spots that lie on the lattice. There's more than one lattice. The other one, the second lattice is not yet defined. So and there's not all spots. So there's some spots that are not found. I can manually edit them now if I go into the spot selection tool here. Um, by clicking a few on here um, but I could also change the um, this is control right mouse button save spot list I could also do this um, automatically by changing in the spot list search the parameters here to be less restrictive but I don't care about this at the moment I just go into the unbending process which would then move this image or warp it and stretch it so that the crystal becomes perfect. And this is already done, this is the first machine. The full log file is down there. Um, so the verbosity shows me that um, it's a very good image. We have 30 IQ1 spots and 70 IQ2 spots. and here is the cross correlation map between the reference and the image and with L I see the lattice here and this shows us that for some areas the points are spot on where they should be and for other areas the image needs unbending because the crystal lattice nodes are not where they should be which is crystal distortions. Um, and there are some areas where there's very little crystal, like here for example, and other areas where the crystal is strong, but needs unbanding here. Um, this is a cross collation map. And the unbanding has then unbanned this image. So there's a vector plot. I double click this and it opens this postscript file. And there we see these lines that indicate with 10 times exaggeration, 10 times exaggeration, yeah indicate um, how this image was warped to become a better crystal. The color here is the direction, the length is the 10 times exaggerated length, and in the middle there was no crystal. Um, so, and this has led to a better Fourier transform, which is this here. And this now has much sharper spots than before, so they are now, many here are now really just one pixel in size. Um, <coughs> if I indicate the lattice now, it should be much easier to find spots here. So, um, if I now run the spot list determination again, then in the second round it will use um, up to IQ8 spots, and before it was only up to IQ5, now it's up to IQ8. And now it found 235 spots, so if I open this Fourier transform from unbend one. Now we have many more spots. It's almost complete. That's probably too many, but anyway. Um, and there's the ton rings and the lattice with L. Yeah. So now, with this better spot list and a better idea about the reference, we can do the second round of unbending. Um, <coughs> the reference is the center of the first unbent image, which is this one. 
protein is black in this image. So this would be the central reference. And this is a 45 degree tilted sample, so this has no symmetry here. And black is the protein. Um, it's a cryo image, I believe. So this is running now. Um, it's doing CTF correction again. So what did it do here? Yeah, the CTF correction takes a lot of time. Oh, it has masked the image. It has masked the image where the crystal was present. So we remember in the middle there was no crystal in this image. Um, in this cross-correlation map here, there was a zone with... Um, Oh, now it, it was masked. Yeah, there was a zone with no crystal in the middle, and this area has now been masked away. If I double-click this here and make it smaller, um, we can see here zones where there it's masked, and it's masked with a Gaussian edge, so that we don't get any streaks in the Fourier transform, and only the areas remain that have a good crystal um, signature. And this here should now become a cross-correlation map with a reference and this is already the unbent reference. So we unbent the image but for test purposes we also unbent this cross-correlation map just to check if after unbending these spots are all exactly in the lattice nodes where they belong to. And here in the middle there's no crystal but in this right corner after unbending this looks better. Not perfect but better. So the unbending, I think, does the right thing here. Um, <coughs> and the result of this is now a final Fourier transform of the unbent uh, image. And this Fourier transform has then very sharp peaks. Um, there's also an image where this comes from. Um, yeah, And this can now be evaluated, or was evaluated, and what we obtain is an APH file, which is an amplitude and phase file that has lots of columns here. And if I go a bit to the center, <coughs> um, to the low, lower reflections, this is a long file. So here are the smaller reflections. So the reflection 01 has an amplitude of 4000 at a phase of 94 degrees and it has a background amplitude of 200 and the ratio between 4000 peak height and 245 background height, that's a very strong ratio which gives this spot an IQ value of 1, so 1 is a good spot. The spot 0, 2 is almost absent, there's nothing measured, and the background is still more or less the same, so that's an IQ 9 spot that's missing. 0, 3 is weaker, is 2000, so it's still an IQ 1 spot. 0, 04 has an amplitude of 1000 and a background of 190, so that's an IQ2 spot, and so on. And here's the phase values. And the phase values go from 0 to 390 degrees. Um, so this is the result of Unband 2. The next is movie scripts, and nothing happens there because we don't have movies here. Um, so they just skip. Um, the import function set this flag enable movie mode to know, so these would skip. And then here's CTF correction part 2, there was part 1. And CTF correction part 2 is rather fast because it only works on the amplitude and fi phase file that we just looked at. So there's an input file and there's an output file. And the output file is now CTF corrected. Um, so it looks as before, we have an amplitude and a phase, but these phases are now sometimes um, 300... Oh no, that's actually not true. So this was CDF correction mode 1, which means we had done phase flipping before. Um, and the only thing that remained here was amplitude correction. And this should not have done anything, because the amplitude correction on a tilted image can't be correctly done. Yeah, so this should actually have done nothing. Okay. 
Yeah, and so now we have an amplitude and phase file, and with that we can compute a map, um, which is purely based on this text file, amplitude and phase. And that is here. And, oh, and this one, the contrast is still wrong, because this was a cryo image, and here this parameter invert contrast of the final map is still on yes. Yes is for negative stain. I need this on no for cryo images. And if I run this with a contrast no, then this image shows white protein. This W sign here is my protein. I know this one. This is under 50 degree tilt, my white protein here. And there's one, and there's one, and there's one, and there's one. Um, <coughs> so then we are done. We can look at this file also. Um, as postscript. Yeah. So what is still wrong is um, this is a tilted image, 45 degree tilt. I should have looked for one that has zero tilt and then you would go to the custom script evaluate lettuce and find out what this, to find out things about this lettuce. Um, and with this script you could find out the symmetry, the space group, yeah, which in this case is P4. Um, on a non-tilted crystal you can find out that this is P4 or actually it's P4212 I think and the unit cell is 134 by 134 angstroms let me see if I run this again yeah and this so, since I typed in my magic knowledge about this crystal, which you can get from a different crystal, which is then a non-tilted, you start with a non-tilted sample, I typed in the unit cell length, and that allows this program to take the lattice vectors, which we have, um, the lattice vectors are these here, 39 and 18 and 33 and 35, these are the lattice vectors in Fourier space, and with this this program EM tilt can compute the tilt geometry for this crystal um, taxa and tangle and this can be computed back to tilt axis and tilt angle um, and now we can compare these values that are based on the lattice vectors with the values that are based on the defocus gradient and they fit rather well <coughs> I usually trust the lattice vectors more so this 44.8 degree tilt angle is probably the case and not 48.9 which was based on the defocus gradient. If your pixel size is a little bit off then the defocus gradient would be wrong but the lattice distortions are still reliable. So and because the tilt angle is more than 25 degrees um, this should have taken over the the no, it didn't. So it's still in 38. So determine tilt geometry from letters. I set this to yes. And then this should take now the tilt geometry from the lattice and overwrite. Hmm. Doesn't do it. Should overwrite the lattice. Okay, I'll look into that. It's a bug. Oh, it's here. Is it that? Yeah, that's it. So, it's not really clear what this is for. This is for the script that runs but the script evaluate letters, so this tilt geometry is for the script for this one here to that's this parameter um, where is it? this one here, determine tilt geometry from the letters for the get lattice script. But in the custom script, evaluate lattice, 
um, the parameter that decides here is override local tilt geometry, this one here, so that this evaluate letter script can override the tilt geometry, which is just which it, which it just did. So this allowed now the tilt angle for the carbon film to be corrected to the 44.8, even though the defox gradient said 49. Yeah, okay. Um, so now, now we would know um, the absolute lattice and we could go here to find lattice which is then more reliable. Let me just try this out. Because now we have 34, 134 and 134 as lattice vectors and this can now find more than one lattice. This find lattice script. So where is that? Um, it only found one. Yeah, it only found one lattice. Okay, sometimes it finds two, not on this one. So go to this image. Well, it looks to me as if there's two. Well, there's one and the second one is not defined. There should be a second one. Yeah, I don't know. Okay, we found one. So then this image is processed and if you now go back to the library, um, <coughs> I think I have to go up and down then we have here the image before drift correction and after drift correction which are the same files because there's no drift correction happening here it's not a movie so this is a useless image overview but the drift overview is also useless because there's no drift um, the processing overview is interesting there's a ton ring fit looks good this is our unbending profile where we had in the middle no crystal this is the IQ spot IQ plot after unbending and this is the white protein, the W. That's that's the good view here. And this is the merge overview. We are not yet in merging. Um, so this is the good view. And then in these columns here, we have corrected the pixel size to 134. Uh, the specimen number is not of interest here. So the specimen number we can take away. Numbers of frames is also boring. Probably just one for all of them. Um, QVAL and QVAL2 is the same. Um, if you have movies, then you have also movie script A and movie script B, and they come up with quality values, and then you can compare these three quality values. But since we do not have movies here, I don't want to look at the QVAL um, A and B. And it's only QVAL2, and QVAL is just the same as is the highest one. So I take the QVAL out. Um, we are not yet in merging, the merging phase residual, we don't need this. Um, and these are also the IQ statistics for merging spots. Um, tilt axis and tilt angle is defined here. And what else do we have here? There's an original stack name, we don't have movies, so we don't need this stack. Um, or the comment I could have kept. And the error is, yeah, I can leave it there, and the comment is there. So this was now one image. We have others, so I can now select a few others. Let me not select the first one. Oh, I just select them, doesn't matter. So I select them, by clicking them on. And then for these selected ones, I want to run the following on these. So what do we need to do with them? We need the first import script which takes the TIFF file or MRC file and transforms it to an MRC file with the right name. Then we need all these 2D crystal scripts and I click the first and then with shift I hold down shift and click the last one then that's all of them. They're all selected here. I could take these movie scripts out but it doesn't matter. I mean they're just skipping so but I can take them out here. Um, so, and if I click continue, these go into the batch queue. 
and the batch queue is this central tab here um, so you can say this batch queue should start automatically and start this here so here's our batch queue <coughs> and these images are all in there um, all these scripts that we just chose for all of them um, and I can set this batch queue to run a bit more than just one, maybe ten in parallel to keep this machine busy um, CDF find is the slow step in this process right? so maybe to accelerate this now for this movie I can put this CTF find to not searching for the tilt geometry and we want to run GCTF which is much faster that's a global parameter so if I change it in image number 13 because of this globe here it will be affecting all other images also the global parameters are always valid for all of them this by the way down here is the measurement of the 7x7 seven seven defocus values that CTF find 4 had done um, for this table here and um, these one fit to a plane where you have less defocus top right and more defocus bottom left and that was this tilt axis there what we had before so the processing queue here is still working only on the first image well so we had this set to one job in parallel before and it only checks this number once the first job is finished so we have to wait until this first thing is done and this still launched CTF find yeah okay so then that's what it's doing and what is this one here this should be NVIDIA SMI minus L3, so all three seconds to update what the graphics cards are doing. So now the CTF correction script is done. Oh, CTF correction in stripes, yeah, that also takes time. This was a defocus determination, lattice, sample filled, and this runs on image number 29 now. We're just in some random order here. Um, so this works at the moment on image 29 first tilt axis and tilt angle is already known but um, the other values not yet but should come in soon pixel size was already corrected this doing here still an unbending and then masking the image with the automatic masking of the crystal for area and the masking after masking is again doing CTF correction in stripes yeah. and now it should slowly be finished there we are so there's a Q value which is very high and the image name was changed with an M in front which is the masking and the crystal here seems to be only in the top corner of this image um, and there's our white protein so this is again some tilt yeah if I go to this <coughs> image the tilt axis here and tilt angle is 30 degrees here um, so if I click on the image that is the image which one is this before masking or after masking now to the focus grays out it's busy probably launching lots of the other 10 jobs in parallel also so this is the image this looks contaminated with water droplets and the water droplets have the white halo 
So I have this function shift f, which is the local Fourier transform. So um, selection based FFT shift f, and with that I can make a little Fourier transform here, and then when I click with the right mouse button, it calculates the Fourier transform where we just are, and with the numbers on the keyboard between one. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I can adjust the contrast of this. So with nine, I see the tone rings, and with um, three or two or one, I see the lattice spots. But at the moment, I want to look at the tone rings um, with eight, for example. And I can zoom this up with plus and minus on the keyboard, but I stay with the normal view. So if we now are bottom left, then we have. Click the wrong mouse button. So I need larger window. And then top right is ton rings this size, and bottom left is really smaller. So I can verify here that the ton rings really are the smallest bottom left. And along this line, the ton rings are roughly the same. So this is the tilt axis direction. And if I display T, then it says less under focus here and more under focus there, and this is the tilt axis. So same tilt axis as before. That's good. So with escape, I go out of this. Computer gets slow now. Um, there's lots of things running at the moment. That's a bit too big. And I'm still working with TeamViewer here, filming the screen on a Macintosh. Um, yeah, so the CPUs are busy, and from time to time there is um, some GPU work required. Let's see what the processing tab is doing. Well, they're almost all done. Okay, I could add the others also to the queue. Come on, so from this one to that one. Well, I first deselect all, and then I select only these lower ones and feed them into the queue. Um, we are still having a bug in focus, which is that <coughs> if you have selected many images with a cross here, then the GUI gets very slow. So this doesn't play a role right now, but if you have like 4,000 movies recorded and on a three-day session on your Titan or so, and you select them all with this button, then the GUI is sluggish. And the GUI is much more reactive if you just deselect them. So whenever you don't need to submit them to the batch queue, I usually deselect them. If you want to single out some of them, um, you can use these color labels here yeah, and flag them in different colors. And now we can sort them by this Q value, quality value, and then the best image so far is probably this. Oh, the lattice looks... That's probably a wrong lattice, and that's why the Q value is so high. So here we want to see 2 by 2 unit cells, and it should look like this here, where we have one unit cell like this here, and then a second one to the right, and the bottom one here. But this image here got the wrong unit cell. So I go in there. I think it's a non tilted crystal um, and the lattice was wrong. So or is this still running? Oh we didn't determine any tilt geometry anymore. That's that's okay. So here's the origin shifted power spectrum. Okay that's that is a tricky one. And it here took a lattice that is too small. Find lattice got the wrong one. Um, I mean, it got the lattice, but there's three spots, and there should probably be only two. So I think at the moment, <coughs> at the moment it says here's the first one, this is the second vector, but probably the first one should be here. So we, we could do this manually, but we can also go to 
this evaluate lattice which has some lattice um, functions here so I can rotate this or scale so I grow the image uh, the lattice and rotate it by 45 degrees by replacing the h vector with h plus k and the k vector with h minus k and you will see in a second what this does so this rotates oh yeah oh yeah oh there's a bug okay I look into this later okay then the only thing I can demonstrate right now is to do this manually so on the origin shifted power spectrum um, this is our current lattice and then I do this manually with shift R lattice refinement shift R and then I think Oh, it actually did something, this script. It just crashed after I did what it wanted to. So but now we don't have this spot anymore. So I think this is one and here is two. So I double click here and then it corrects. If you can see this, I double click in the vicinity and it jumps onto the highest peak there by double clicking. If I double click here, it jumps to the wrong thing. But if I double click here, then it jumps there. So and I think this is two zero. So then, um, oh, this mouse. So I, I just define this here as two zero, and add a point. And then, if this is two zero, then this would be zero two. I believe. And if I accept this lattice, then might be this. Now I add a few more high resolution spots like this one and already computed this should be 4.4 based on this lattice so I just type enter um, so I just double click in the vicinity there and then it jumps somewhere where these are and now I accept it and it's slightly corrected. Yeah. Okay I go out of this now we need um, with this we need to run just the remaining steps again so we don't have a defocus and tilt axis determined so CDF correction is doing only one single stripe not many and then it's faster and Masking is already done, that's also faster. So <coughs> here we are. Now it looks correct. This is how it should look like. White is protein. The tetramer here. And this is the P4 sub 1 2 symmetry. Um, yeah, and so if we look at this Fourier transform. This is the original Fourier transform here from this image. We make it darker. Yeah, not brilliant, and more than one lattice. But that's it. And ton rings are correct. Yeah. yeah. So that's how I manually corrected one. I'll look into this lattice bug in a second. And we only determined the tilt geometry for two of them and all the others are processed here. Um, so for some it's still running. The ton ring fit isn't there or what is missing? Oh, we switched over to GCTF and GCTF didn't dis compute these. Yeah, it should. So the file is not linked up. Yeah, but at least the final maps look okay for some of them. This is a random selection of images. And these last ones, well, oh this one worked, but this is the other file name. That's a, oh, and this, this is a, a different set of images. This was a 2K image, not a 4K image, and this is why it took the wrong letters. And this is a totally different crystal, and there yeah, nothing worked, I think, with the current setting. I don't know the details. It didn't find any unbanding procedure that makes sense. Okay.